Good afternoon, Sean here from Mountains Garage. Do not adjust your sets. You're not having technical difficulty. This is not the same video I've shot 14 times already. Today we're going to work on this Turbo 400. I picked up over in New Hampshire while on another mission. It was only a few miles out of my way. The guy had it in a bucket of a bulldozer, John Deere 450 with a 4-in-1 bucket. He back, excuse me, inched up to my trailer. I slid it in. I threw him $100. I was on my way. Pots are expensive. If it happens to have aluminum pistons and stuff in it, there's $150 by itself. The tail housing's worth about $75, bucks. even the little shift shafts, like $22. So. I was prepared to buy it pretty much sight unseen. I was pleasantly surprised. It had the torque converter still stuck in it, so none of this is rusted. There's no water in it. He must have had it under cover. I don't know. I never got the whole history of it. He thought it was out of a 70 Corvette. Uh, it is a 1970 transmission. The code is CA on the little identification tag I'll show you. Uh, if I look that up, a quick Google search says uh, CA is a 402 barrel 1970, probably Impala or Monte Carlo. Whatever. You didn't get a Turbo 400 unless you had something special under the hood. They didn't put them behind six cylinders in cars typically, so uh, whatever. Uh, I'm hoping it has aluminum pistons. Maybe a 34 element Sprague or, or 16 with the ability to put a 34 on it. Uh, we'll see. 70 was still the, the golden years. It was only five years into production. Uh, let me show you a few clues as to why you know how you have a 74 ish and down, 65 to 74. Let me show you. If you have a core transmission, please keep it inside. Uh, here we go. 1970 is the year. CA. C means a Chevy case. A was the engine code. Uh, 513, I believe that's 513 days from January 1st, 1969. They did around leap years and stuff like that. You got to look it up, but uh, this isn't some kind of uh, restoration. These numbers are only so important. Uh, on the side of the case, I'll show you when it gets a little cleaner, is also the partial VIN of the vehicle. So if it really mattered, I could deduce even more. I'm just happy it's a 1970 and here's why. It has an 8 volt pump and an 8 volt case. 65 to 74 you can expect to pretty much find this and that's good. It should have and we'll find out shortly uh, aluminum pistons and the forward and direct and the direct and the uh, center support which will make me happy because I buy those and install them in most everything high performance. Even though I don't think it's necessary, absolutely, I like it. Plus, I can machine them down and set my clearances that way. It gives me more room to do what I want to do. The vent was a metal piece instead of the cheap nylon plastic in, after 19, you know, 1975 to end of production. They were plastic. This one you actually got to knock out of the case. doesn't slide out quite as easy as the other one I showed you, but it's not a big deal. In this case, it's an actual two-wheel drive passion to car output shaft. No threads, and there should not be the O-ring groove that I machine off inside. I shouldn't have to do that. That's cool. Uh, a long time ago, at the mental hospital here in Maine, up in the state capital of Augusta, I went to a sale, and that's where I got these really nice stainless pans. Now, you could do the math what they might have been used for. Anyway, I've cleaned them a thousand times, and they're great. I This one here is just for the parts I take out of this to keep them all together. And I reuse what uh, I have to, and you know, then some parts that I don't use end up on the shelf, and I have other storage areas for them. Uh, you can never have too many parts, I guess. But for today, the tray is empty. I'm going to turn on some music. Grab my... Trusty M18 Milwaukee, and I'm going to gun this apart. I would expect really taking my time. It's going to take me in half an hour or less. That's really inspecting things close. They're not difficult to take apart. I've got all the tools out because I do them all the time. Uh, so the guy told me it didn't move. If it didn't move just in forward, uh, if you have a reference manual, it is a nice trouble chat. You know, you just tell, you look up what doesn't work. For instance, if it didn't just go forward, I would look, you know, no, no movement and drive. 
It gives you the likely suspects. It would be more of a clue if it backed up but didn't go forward because that means your pump's still working and everything. Uh, this one, he said it didn't move at all. And he had diagnosed it as needing a pump. Well, I can stick a screwdriver in by the seal and I can spin the, you know, the lugs are still on that engage the torque converter and the pump gears spin. Uh, so who knows what I'm going to find? Probably, you know, burnt clutches. I've turned the shafts front and back. They all turn so it does not have a broken shaft, which would also, you know, be a likely candidate if you had no movement whatsoever. Uh, but typically when transmissions fail, they don't lose everything. They only lose a certain range, and that makes it easy to diagnose. So let's rip into it, and I hope I got some good parts I can reuse, and we find the problem. All right, first clue is a lot of clutch material in the bottom of the pan. The transmission itself, which often happens if people are having trouble, they'll either change the fluid or have to add it because it blew a line or whatever reason. Uh, it's super clean. I mean, despite the fact the fluid's burnt, she's really clean. Okay, the pump is in fantastic shape. The gears are nice. No issue here. I had to pry the forward clutch out of the direct clutch. She was stuck. The forward clutches are smoked. My pressure plate's junk. That's okay. I had to pry that out of here. This pressure plate's still usable, believe it or not. But the clutches came popping out like a jack-in-the-box when I took the snap ring out. And furthermore, Sprague's doing nothing. Should freewheel this way and lock this way. It is a round back drum, provided it didn't do any damage that the bore's in a nice shape. As long as it didn't hurt with the Sprague rides, I was going to convert to 34 anyway. I don't run a band in the front. I don't need manual low with a trans brake. Yeah, and I got my aluminum pistons I was hoping for. So while it looks bad, life is good. Mistake alert. What I should have just said is I don't need manual second. Manual second is the front band, and we trash all that stuff with the trans brake valve body. Uh, there are some manual valve bodies that do leave that function in. It doesn't allow you to run a case saver that I'm aware of, because typically the pin for the front band is the anchor for the case saver. But you're always gonna have engine braking in third and I would assume you have it in first due to the function of the transmission. But when you take the front band out of a turbo 400, you lose manual second. So if you're going down a big hill and you put it down to manual second, gonna freewheel. All right, back to the video. All right, I finished stripping it out. Uh, all in all, I'm gonna give it uh, a fantastic rating despite its looks. Somebody's silicone in the pan gasket on, that's always tragic, but all in all, it's a really nice case. A uh, little bit of weirdness taking it apart. There was no upper valve body gasket, or the gasket that goes against the valve body itself. That's kind of strange. There was one in the case, but not one in the valve body. That is not normal. I wouldn't point my finger at that being the problem why it burned up. Uh, because, for instance, my trans brake valve body doesn't run one. So who knows? I don't know why anybody would leave it out. It didn't look to have a whole lot of other mods. It did have a small modulator, but that's external and anybody can easily change that at any time for any reason. Typically they would start putting oil up into the engine. When you pull the rubber hose off the vacuum modulator, oil would come out. Uh, I bought a car that way. The guy thought the engine was gone. Uh, I love doing, I'll call this 1970 old stuff because you get like a steel filter tube. Now, it's for a short pan, so I'm not going to use it. But, you know, it just gives you a clue as to what things used to be like. It's pretty rare you see two terminals on the electric pass-through. One's for the kickdown, and this one had a switch on the valve body. I assume it's emissions related. Uh, it's not transmission function. Let's go look at the rest of it. The lower gear train looks nice. The uh, center support has a aluminum piston like I was hoping for. Planetaries, it did have the groove. It made a liar out of me. Had the O-ring and a groove, so I'll be cutting that off. I must have had a yoke that went up over it. Uh, I went ahead and put a 16 element sprag back in this just to test everything. It all looked like brand new. 
Uh, you can see where this one is now permanently out of shape and they laid over. Where this one is still active. And uh, to, out of true dispose, uh, disclosure here, I initially put this in backwards because you can't tell. So I put it in to see which way it turns. It needs to freewheel this way. And then I flopped it around. This is off just to show you what the rollers look like. Uh, this is an actual sprag. Uh, that's an actual roller clutch. That's what you'll also find in the back of your direct drum. It's, people call it a sprag. Technically, that's a roller clutch, and this is an actual sprag. Does it matter? Nope. Call it what you want. Again, so I just stuck a 16 in here. Make sure I'll show my, uh, all my components were good. Uh, if I flip this over, you can even see portions of the lip seal have even blown out because the piston was traveling so far. Good shot right there, I guess, if you can see it. Well, you can imagine what a lip seal looks like when it's hanging out because it was stroking so much. Uh, you never know what occurred first, but something, something definitely occurred. But we can fix it. This thing will live a happy life. I'm glad I was uh, able to purchase it reasonable. It has a lot of good parts. Life is good. Back at the trouble tree, uh, we didn't have a forward clutch or direct clutch that was functioning. So therefore, it probably didn't move. Because the forward clutch is on and everything except uh, neutral, reverse, and park. But to back up, you still need the direct clutch and that was definitely not functioning. Uh, the rear band was, direct clutch was not. And for any of your forward gears, you gotta have the forward clutch and ours was smoked. Therefore, it probably did not move. That's enough fun for one afternoon. Actually, it only took, including having a visitor, maybe 20 minutes. And then I messed around with the sprag and stuff. Yeah, this wasn't a timed event, but it's just not that involved once you get used to everything. And hopefully I've gotten used to what stuff looks like, what it's supposed to look like, and sometimes what it doesn't look like at anymore. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to move on to another subject now. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> I said that about the 9-inch Ford, and then I found more things to talk about. I could still talk. Want to talk about 9-inch Fords? We can. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care.